Hey everybody, this fairy fire that occurred after Christmas seems to involve the Islamic State, which I'm going to go into, and it also seems to be the fifth 40-day fulfillment that we're watching for. So the London Telegraph reported on July 1st, 2014, that the leader of the Islamic State vowed to lead the conquest of Rome. And then on July 3rd, 2014, Reuters reported that militants from the Islamic State group seized control of Syria's largest oil field. And these two events occurred on the exact window for the ancient observance of Shavuot in the Northern Hemisphere. Then on our September watch date, September 16th, 2014, a top Iraqi diplomat announced that ISIS made credible threats to kill the Pope in Rome. And according to this pattern of the past four years, the event that occurs on September 16th should tie into the Christmas fire that we were watching for. So three days after Christmas, this ferry heading to Italy caught on fire, killing at least 13 people. And CNN reported there were explosions and the fire started in the parking bay, which was filled with trucks containing oil. And according to this Danish news article right here that I translated into English, one of the passengers said, quote, there were men, Iraqis, Turks, and Pakistanis on the ship, which was put down to allow rescuers to prioritize children, elderly, and women, but they climbed and beat and pulled the people themselves to come to the rescue helicopter into safety. But these apparently were not just men from the Islamic State-dominated area. They may have also been illegal migrants because on December 30th, Reuters reported an Italian prosecutor said illegal migrants were also on the burning ferry. And then the next day, hundreds of Syrian migrants were taken ashore in Italy from another abandoned ship. This is a BBC article posted December 31st about the cargo ship holding 700 migrants that docked in Italy on New Year's Eve, holding Syrians and Kurds. And that was followed by another ship the next day holding 360 migrants. And then a third migrant ship was abandoned also off the coast of Italy on January 2nd, carrying 450 people. And according to the Daily Mail, that ship was also carrying mainly Syrian migrants. So at least three ships docked in Italy three days in a row on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and January 2nd, carrying migrants from both Iraq and Syria into Italy, while this other ferry, also carrying illegal refugees from the Islamic State areas, was still burning from an alleged oil explosion. So this New York Times article posted January 8th says, quote, flames continued to sputter on the ferry more than 12 days after the disaster. So this ferry carrying illegal Syrian refugees has been burning for almost two weeks from an alleged oil explosion. And remember, the Islamic State captured Syria's largest oil field exactly six months prior to this. Exactly six months prior to this. And notice also, this occurred the day after the Southern Hemisphere observance of the ancient biblical appointment of Shavuot. While the oil field was captured six months ago on the Northern Hemisphere observance of Shavuot. And all of this was occurring during the 40-day watch. We were also looking at back here in this video that was uploaded on December 19th, expecting something to do with either North Korea or the Islamic State on January 2nd. So this ferry explosion 
seems to have been the fifth 40-day pattern since the June massacre, culminating on significant events, all of these things, culminating on significant events involving either North Korea or the Islamic State every 40 days. And the next 40 days will end roughly on February 11th through the 13th. And that will be the 21st day of the 10th month on the ancient biblical calendar in the Northern Hemisphere, using the first crescent on the 21st of January as the first day. And January 21st this year starts the seventh year of Obama's presidency. And that coincides exactly with the start of the 10th month on the ancient calendar this year, which is an unusual parallel to Esther 2.16. The bride Esther is taken in the 10th month in the seventh year of the king's reign. So next week is also a high watch from the 12th until the 21st. January 12th is the 10-year anniversary of the launching of the Deep Impact spacecraft, which is the craft that they made a movie about in 1998 that accurately predicted the launch itself and other events of the past 17 years. The Deep Impact launch was also the inspiration for a 2010 episode of Sci-Fi Science Physics of the Impossible in which astrophysicist Michio Kaku mentions the landing of a spacecraft on a comet 10 years before the comet is due to hit the Earth. So January 12th is the 10-year anniversary of the launch of that spacecraft, not the landing on the comet. The landing on the comet happened in July of that year, but since January 12th is also the date alluded to in the movie Battle Los Angeles right here, which was released March 11th, 2011, the exact date of the Japan quake and tsunami that killed close to 20,000 people. For that reason, that date is also on our calendar as a watch. Then January 14th will be the 14th day of the first month on the multitude calendar starting the week of unleavened bread, which is the biblical time for the Exodus. And the Exodus story describes, excuse me, the Exodus story describes the after effects of an asteroid impact. And I don't think it's a coincidence a movie was just released depicting that on December 12th, one month ago. January 14th is also the 24th day of Kislev, the first day of Hanukkah on the ancient biblical calendar, which is this year an unusual convergence of those two biblical appointments. That's also the date, the close call asteroid from 2011, YU-55, will pass through Virgo's birth canal from our perspective on Earth at the same moment the moon aligns with the two stars representing her feet. This right here resembles the sign that is mentioned in Revelation 12. Again, warning of an asteroid impact. It says, the dragon casts the stars to the Earth with its tail and it stands before the woman in heaven who has the moon at her feet while she is giving birth to the child who will rule with a rod of iron. The child who will rule with the rod of iron can be a reference to either Jesus, as indicated in Psalm 2, and Revelation 19 it says, Faithful and true, his names as a flame of, I'm sorry, his eyes as a flame of fire, and on his head many crowns with a name written that no humans knew. His name is called the Word of God. He shall rule them with a rod of iron on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Um, but Revelation 2 also says that those who overcome and keep the works until the end will rule with a rod of iron. So this all may be symbolic we use the name Jesus, but it, it all may be symbolic of something much bigger than that. So it's saying here 
those who will rule with the rod of iron, which is Jesus and those who overcome, they are the child in verse 5 who will be caught up to God, to the throne in heaven, the true Mount Zion. And the dragon in verse 5, Three can also represent a few different things. We know it represents a comet or asteroid because its tail will cast the stars to Earth, but we also know it can represent the planet Saturn. So this sign in Revelation 12 did occur in 2012 from our perspective on Earth, and it involved the sun, which Psalm 19 tells us represents Jesus, or the bridegroom, and the planet Saturn which represents the dragon, according to Roman myth. But it's also possible this sign may occur again, the Revelation 12 sign, it's possible it may occur again when the comet or asteroid is in the sky, being the comet and asteroid, or asteroid being the meteorite itself. So in this case, right here, YU55 would hypothetically represent the people that will be rescued if the dragon represents a falling meteorite, for example, the dragon standing before the woman. Hypothetically, this asteroid YU55 that will be sitting in the Revelation 12 position on multitude Passover is the asteroid that passed between the Earth and Moon on November 9th, 2011 at midnight. And that was connected to all of these other events that we've talked about before. So this video is not a prediction or prophecy. It's a report connecting the dots between biblical prophecy, visions, and dream fulfillments, and world events. If you want more information on anything I've discussed, click on show more in the description below this video to find more information on this subject. Thank you to everyone who has supported this work. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you next week.